but there was truly a kind of pathetic, a pathetic gasp that she was undergoing, saying, look, I've invested myself, I've spent myself on this path, and I'm still hungry. There must be something else. All of this was a preparation for something else. Glory to God in the highest. Hi, thanks for tuning in to our daily inspiration again. And as always, thank you so much for taking the time to be here with us. And hopefully all of you will be edified with what we've put together for you here. And I hope you're not tired of listening to Father Carlos Martins because there's so much I've learned by listening to him. And I hope all of you will feel the same way too. You've heard a bit of it in the beginning, and so let me share with you the rest of it here. Never, my friends, doubt that Jesus has a plan for you. It may be a plan where he transforms you into a saint immediately. It may be a, a plan that he transforms you into a saint at the end of your life. But never lose sight of that, because that work is, properly speaking, Christ's. It is outside your power to turn yourself into a saint, but is well within the power of Jesus Christ as we see in the great example of the good thief. But I remember I encountered years ago, I was at, it was near the beginning of my priesthood, and I was out of state, I was uh, preaching some various missions. Uh, I was gone for about a 15 day period. And in the midst of those parish missions that I was preaching, there was a call that a woman was dying in the hospital and a priest was needed and no priest could be located. And so I was asked, would I be willing to go? Certainly. Uh, so I uh, got in my vehicle and I drove myself over to the hospital. I had the room number that she was in. And so I found this woman who was quite aged and it was clear that she was at the end of her days. She had had cancer. The cancer had wasted her away. Uh, so she was really a shell of physically of what she had been in her life. And so she, when I walked in the room, there was this kind of relief in her face. And she said, Father, I need to talk to you. And she said, there's something wrong. I know I'm not supposed to die right now. And so what do you say to somebody who has that sentiment in their dying moments? I mean, this person has cancer, has had cancer for several years. She knew that she had cancer. She had been receiving treatment for cancer. But what was grieving her was the fact that she felt her life was incomplete. And she had said to herself, all throughout her life, I know that God has a plan for me, right? and I need to do that plan. And in that dying moment, she said, Father, I have not done my plan. I know there's something else I'm supposed to do with my life. I know, I just, I just don't know what it is. I don't, can you pray for me that I find out what it is? Can you pray for a healing, that I'm able to be healed, and then go do that thing? that I'm supposed to do. And so in her heart, she felt there was something left to do, some job apportioned to her by the Lord, which she was meant to accomplish. And so at this point, I had nothing to say to her other than the fact that, you know, I'm going to call her Rose. Rose, I think what the Lord wants of you right now is to die well, to die repentant, in his grace, to turn to him and say to him, Lord, I repent of all of my sins. Please forgive me and do with me whatever you will. And she would have nothing to do with that. There was something she was supposed to do for which she asked me for prayers that God might lead her to that. And so she started naming off all of the different accomplishments she had done in her life. Uh, this was in the state of California. So this woman had a great many connections with Hollywood, with celebrities, with the wealthy and the famous. And so she started naming off persons that she knew. And she went to this country with that celebrity. And she would be part of a book club with that movie star. And, she, and all of these people. And it was in the midst of her rhyming off this litany of different experiences that it dawned on me that this woman lived her life lived her life the wrong way. She associated her life with achieving things, accomplishments with the wealthy and the famous, that they were great in terms of the eyes of the world. So I knew that she thought in naming off this list of people that she knew that I would somehow be impressed. 
I have to be honest, I, I couldn't be less impressed. I mean, uh, I, I, I had nothing against the woman. I'm sure she was a lovely human being, and uh, I, I have no reason to, to believe that she wasn't. But there was truly a kind of pathetic, a pathetic gasp that she was undergoing, saying, look, I've invested myself, I've spent myself on this path, and I'm still hungry. There must be something else. All of this was a preparation for something else. And so I tried to steer her into this deeper relationship with God, become the Eucharist, become now a repentant soul that is able to allow Christ to come into your heart and form with you that relationship that he has been wanting to. And it was as if I said nothing. She <laughs> kept going back to asking me to pray for a healing that she may go out and accomplish the things she did. Well, of course, I prayed for that healing. I prayed for it. And what came of it? Well, uh, nothing. Uh, the woman ended up dying. I mean, nothing visible happened from it. I mean, nature had taken a course in this woman's life. She didn't have very much long to live. And so it was pretty clear to everyone, but perhaps herself, that that her days were numbered. But I never had experienced a sense of pathos, a sense of pity at seeing a creature make a petition and be in a state as pathetic as this woman's. And, and I don't mean it uh, to be insulting towards her. God bless her. I pray to God that she is in heaven, and I prayed many times for the same prayed for her soul many times over the years, but the way that she had lived her life did not prepare her for death. And I pray in those dying moments that I was able to do something to her that would get her to transform from whatever path she was on into being Christ's wheat. For the second part of this video, I'd like to talk a little bit about how the Eucharist prepares us for heavenly glory. Jesus gave us the Eucharist not only as food for the journey, but also as a way to prepare us for ultimate union with him for all eternity. The Eucharist is a profound gift to the church that helps sustain our faith here on earth, uniting us in a unique way to Jesus Christ. At the same time, the Eucharist is a pledge of future glory, preparing our hearts for our ultimate destination. And the church also explains how the Eucharist is an anticipation of the union we will experience in heaven. In an ancient prayer, the church acclaims the mystery of the Eucharist. O sacred banquet in which Christ is received as food, the memory of his passion is renewed, the soul is filled with grace and a pledge of the life to come is given to us. If the Eucharist is the memorial of the Passover of the Lord Jesus, if by our communion at the altar we are filled with every heavenly blessing and grace, then the Eucharist is also an anticipation of the heavenly glory. Even Jesus alluded to this eschatological dimension of the Eucharist at the Last Supper. At the Last Supper, the Lord himself directed his disciples' attention toward the fulfillment of the Passover in the kingdom of God. I tell you, I shall not drink again of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Whenever the church celebrates the Eucharist, she remembers this promise and turns her gaze to him who is to come. The good news is that while Jesus' presence is veiled in the Eucharist, this veil will be lifted when we meet him in the eternal embrace of heaven. The church knows that the Lord comes even now in his Eucharist and that he is there in our midst. However, his presence is veiled. Therefore, we celebrate the Eucharist awaiting the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, asking to share in your glory when every tear will be wiped away. On that day, we shall see you, our God, as you are. We shall become like you and praise you forever through Christ our Lord. Whenever we attend Mass and receive Holy Communion, we should keep this in mind waiting patiently for the day when we will see Jesus as he truly is and rest joyfully in his love. Well then, that will be all for the video this time. And as always, thank you so much for taking the time to be here with us. And hopefully all of you have learned a lot from this video. Remember, if there's any feedback or suggestion, please let me know in the comments below. Until the next one, stay safe, stay healthy, and may God bless you.